in the raw. Arcade's guy on the free media, and I'm your host, your brother, Haji, Dr. Ocean Cat. I have with me here the papers of uh, Sunday, June 13, 2021, the Kaicho News, the Freddie Kisson column. I don't know many of you like my reading and, and my style and so on, and I'm one of the the fans of Freddie Kisun, even though many things, like I told you before, I disagree with him. And he wouldn't expect anyone to agree with everything with him. I never met the man. Can you believe that? We never spoke. One time we just said hello, crossing each other. And one time I, I hated the guy. You know, but the, the, the guy has a purpose to serve. God make people in different ways. His job is to critique the government of the day. Generally, and so the, the government of the day always have a way of hating him. But I think the man is a jur journalistic giant. I think he's a, as a columnist, an intellectual, as a commentator, as a political scientist, I think he's class. And that he needs to be recognized and rewarded for his work over the decades, never dedicated to one political entity. Um, in the article of Sunday, June 13th, and this reading has been done on 15th, the Tuesday of June, 2021. I'm giving Ramjatan permission to reveal my secret. Something is going on. And so it's, it's, it's interesting. What is the secret of Freddy Kisu? So the topic here, I'm instructing my coordinator. The topic for this one is, what is Freddy Kisun's secret. And he is saying, I'm giving Ram Chetan permission to reveal my secret. I was sent a clip from Mark Benchkop's Facebook interview with Kemraj Ram Jatan last week. Benchkop asked for an explanation of my fallout with the APNO and AFC government. Ram Chetan said there is a reason, but he will not disclose it. Oh, in the raw gets it now. It means that there is a secret about me that the AFC leadership has in its possession. But Ramjatan, as you heard, did not want to let it out. Last Friday afternoon, I ran into David Patterson while chatting. He got annoyed and admonished me for suggesting that he was corrupt and walked away. I'm now informing both Ramjutan and Patterson and the rest of the AFC's hierarchy. I thought he was going to use the word polit politicians like to use. Cabal to humiliate the other side, even though it's a good English word. AFC hierarchy, especially Raphael Trotman and Kathy Hughes. Both of them were the subject of my critical pen in the recent times, to tell the Guyanese people what was the reason that resides in me that explains why I became a crusader against the APNU and AFC government. In revealing the secret, the AFC leaders will obviously lie. I will not sue for libel if anyone lies on me. And that's, that's, that's the heart of the guy, you know. He don't sue anybody. Generally, I like this guy, uh, even though I disagree with him many times, and I like his family, and uh, respect his wife a lot as a lady of class. I don't believe media operatives should sue for libel. So, in disclosing the reasons, the AFC leaders will obviously scandalize me since. So by saying that, he expects to get blows, you know, because he will not sue. I never asked for anything from my then friends when they got into power in 2015. Was turned down and thus my anger. Never asked for anything from my then friends when they got into power in 2015. I never had a substantial conversation over the phone or in person with any leader of the AFC from May 2015 until the time that the regime 
was dissolved in August 2020. I never asked any EFC minister for something for me because there was never a conversation. If only EFC big wig I ever had, the only AFC big wig I ever had a meaningful conversation was for the five for the five years the AFC was in power was Kemraj Ramjatan. It occurred in his office in February 2018 and it was a temp tempestuous confrontation in which I accused him of betraying me and the Guyanese people. So tempestuous, it was like a tempest, like a hurricane, thunderstorm and lightning. Of course, I will be facing the loss of credibility when Ramjitan discloses the reason why I turned against the EFC because Ramjitan said earlier that he is not going to do it. Right, ladies and gentlemen? There can be no loss of credibility because Ramjitan cannot disclose what never took place. Of course, he can sprout the fiction. And we know, like the, um, the Russians and the Libyan uh, in, in the elections, a fiasco of interfering with the database and so on, and he couldn't arrest anybody but he, they were deported immediately and such nonsense. So Ramchitan has a fantastic imagination, ladies and gentlemen. He can sprout a fiction, Freddie Kisun says. There are several persons I have had discussions with about the topic of my falling out with the APNO and AFC that I campaigned for. And right after that, you know, he said he regretted doing it because they had disappointed him and everyone else. Right away he went against them, even though he campaigned for them and he indicated that he regretted them. And in a way he caused the PPP government in 2015 to lose the election. The latest is Aubrey Heath Retimaya, former deputy to Clive Thomas of Sara, or Sarah. Our discussion took place last week and I told him he has my permission to quote my side of the conversation. Let me repeat what I have told such people like Norman Brown and Heath Retimaya, the persons I had dialogue with on the subject recently. I have said, and I'm saying it here right now, I do not think it serves the dignity of a human to go his her friend who became head of government or minister of government and asked for position or concession. He doesn't believe that. So, well, yours truly didn't do it too, and I don't do it. As a matter of fact, while the PPPC is in power, I just lost a major contract to a company who is suspected of being involved in money laundering and such other things, um, and who has been tendering below cost and suspected that they have reasons why they're doing that. But I don't go wrong begging, I can't help it. I never asked, the, the only EFC big wig I ever had a meeting conversation was, was Kemraj Ram Chatan. I didn't do it after my friends became part of the government in 2015. My anger against the afternoon EFC is that they betrayed so many good, genuine people who made them win power. A lot of youths, you know, they let them down. All we can remember is Moses and his siren, and nothing of substance, nothing of wisdom, nothing of intellectual class leadership. And then Mr. Man, Ramchatan, wants his position and went and um, campaigned against the man and went to election and took the leadership of the EFC away from Nagamoto. What kind of people are these that you, have, you call friends? When you have friends like those, you don't need enemies. The name Kamaraj Narayan comes up right away. He is currently vice chairman of the UG Workers Union. That gentleman left his wife and baby son and drove me up for public meetings in Bobby's Conkless times. That's Kamaraj Narayan. At several meetings, we were attacked. On every occasion, we reached Georgetown on the return trip 
in the uncivilized hours. Nearing being harmed seriously one morning at Ogle at 2 a.m. So their lives were in danger. Well, here is a man that he's zeroing in, a good man to his opinion, Kamraj Narayan, who is vice chairman of the UG Workers Union. He, he worked at UG in information technology for 15 years and was never sent on a training course, never got a promotion. These were the wrongs I expected the AFC to write when they got into power. But how can they, Freddy? They were only interested in their animalistic needs, the AFC, in their power and their comfort and their titles. But I couldn't see any minister to discuss these people's legitimate expectations. Kamraj Narayan was treated the same way between 2015 and 2020, the way he was treated at UG prior to 2015. I couldn't see any AFC minister to talk about employment for the young AFC cadres who helped me during the 2011 and 2015 campaigns. Ram Chetan cannot dare tell this nation what was the reason for me turning against the AFC when it was in power. I repeat, Ram Chetan cannot dare Freddie Kisson challenges him. Tell this nation what was the reason for me turning against the EFC when it was in, in power, except to mount off a fiction unless he'd lie. And we know lawyers like to tell lies so that they may eat. Lawyers have problems because if they don't tell lies in court and put people in trouble and help criminals to escape, usually they can't eat. Lawyers, I don't disrespect you. I know there's some of you guys who are good and honorable, but most of them got to tell lie to eat, man. It's a hard thing. And so as we close, any human would know you wouldn't be lying if you say you, you didn't. But I never had the opportunity to discuss it with the EFC leader. I never asked them. They never asked me. End of story. Freddie, friends and family, brothers and sisters, all they cared about was themselves. They never cared about Guyana. They said they went into and they will never. The AFC confounded liars, people of Guyana, the most confounded of culprits, criminal minded I've ever seen. They took an oath that they will never join the PPP or they will never join the PNC. That's <laughs> what they did most deceptive, evil, and wicked people. Your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Ocean Khan, in the raw, saying thank you for joining in. Share and farewell.